Hi, I'm Thomas Stephen Varga. I was just on the Keith Andrew Network. Uh, he's doing a great job. I really, really enjoyed the interview. He's really open, fun to talk to, and I'd recommend it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and welcome to the Keith Andrew Network. Today, it is episode 778. That's right, 778. Today, I'm here with Thomas Varka, the one and only Thomas Varka. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Keith Angie Network on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let's get to it. First question I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about your background and how you come to do what you do today. Uh, yeah, well, um, I guess I'm, I'm an actor and I'm also an acting teacher. And my background with that is I, I started acting. Uh, technically, I started acting like in fourth grade. I did some, you know, some funny musical. But it was, it was um, something I really liked. And I kind of didn't continue from there for a while. But pretty much starting in high school and on, I've been doing a lot of theater. Um, I ended up going to college for theater and I went to graduate school. That's where I, I moved to California originally for graduate school, got my master of fine arts in acting, um, did a lot of theater. And then in the last several years, I've been mainly in Hollywood uh, working on film and TV stuff. So. Oh, that sounds awesome. Uh, who influenced you to get into this type of area? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think a lot of people in a lot of little ways, um, you know, um, I don't, I don't know if there's, there's there one inspiration, but, um, it's, it's mainly, I think the thing that keeps me wanting to do it is more, um, I've always wanted to do something that I think has some kind of, um, impact or has that I feel is important, which, you know, I like I like your whole project here. Um, you know, I think it's really important when people have a strong reason for what they're doing. And for me, acting is, is a lot about trying to get into the headspace of understanding other people. And um, so if I can do that as an art form where I try to understand other people by learning to play them or uh, presenting different characters that other people can learn about, different types of people, that's sort of my, I think that's more my inspiration than a particular person. Well, I agree with you. And one thing I do want to point out for people out there, never do anything half-ass. You know, if you're very passionate about something, give absolutely nothing more than 110%. Because there's been times where I'm like, well, you know, I really want to, don't want to be doing this right now. When people first meet you, you have the first 10 seconds. What I found out, I thought it was 30, but, but it's actually 10. You have the first 10 seconds to make a first impression. So if you have the uh, do half-ass attitude, then Vanderguppert, CW is okay, I know who that person is. If they didn't mm. look happy at the last job, so why should I be happy with bringing them to my new job or whatever gig we're doing? So always be upbeat, full of energy, respectful. You know, it's always good to make a last impression. That's good advice, yeah. No, it, it, absolutely. Now passing it back to you is, what do you think? Do you think, uh, what's your opinion about the first 10 seconds? Well, um, yeah, I guess I haven't thought about it in terms of like a quantifiable number before, but um, yeah, I mean, I think that, that there's a lot that people can tell about you right in the beginning that, you know, sometimes that's, that's a fair assessment. Sometimes it's not, but I think, um, you know, cause you could have a bad day, <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, about how a person engages with you in the beginning that tells tells them a lot about you. So I think that's 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 fair. No, absolutely. The next question I want to ask you is what makes you different from the competition? So you mentioned you're in the entertainment world. How do you create a persona? And it's kind of funny to be you're talking about that actually. I was actually thinking about creating different characters from the show but the question for you is how do you create a certain persona and say are you like what people say as you see it's what you get or are you more like 
I like to put on a show, like, well, when I'm home with the family, I'm this way. But when I'm in the public eye, I'm that way. Do you agree with that? Or how do you perceive yourself? Hmm. Um, well, I think what, uh, one of the most important things to me is, is honesty. So I try my best to always be the same person. <laughs> you know, obviously different, different situations per, bring, bring out different parts of my personality, I think. Um, but I think in terms of, I, I don't, I don't try to put on any kind of, um, uh, a persona really. I mean, I guess as, as a job, as an actor, you are <laughs> working to do that. But I think for me, I see more, more of that when I'm working on a, a role, for example, if I am putting on another persona, it's more about, um, trying to understand the circumstances that that character is in and trying to see the world from a different point of view and, you know, maybe it's something I agree with. Maybe it's something that I don't, but trying to um, go after what that a person who maybe comes from that perspective might want to go after. So in that way, I think, you know, in acting, I am maybe working on different personas, but um, in life or, or, you know, you mentioned like kind of professionally or at home, I try my best to, to be the same person all the time. No, absolutely. You know what I say to my family and it's, I know I used to be like, you know, when I hang out with my friend, when I had friends, right? That's a nice, I can write a book about all the kindnesses I met. Friends, maybe one person, give or take, but I have more acquaintances for friends. But anyway, when I was with the make-believe friends, I would act one way. And when I'm with, I'm with my family, I'm like more shy, straight in more serious but when um you, you can vouch for this when you're with your friends you're more silly laid back making jokes but it's kind of if people say it's nerves people are saying you just want different reactions from groups of people do you think that's all true or do you think it's just all in your head hmm. um well like i said I, I think i think that definitely different kinds of people in different kinds of situations draw out different parts of your personality. I think that's for sure. Um, so, you know, I, I know that, um, you know, my family or people that I know really well might think that I'm, you know, there's certain, certain behavior, certain ways that I am there. And then, you know, I might be more, um, more reserved or something in, in, in public. So maybe kind of the opposite of, <laughs> of what you just explained. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of people, it's, it's, it's unconscious. It's just kind of, different personality traits that come out in different situations. I mean, obviously I think there are some people who may, um, may be thinking more about wanting to behave a certain way and, and changing their behavior on purpose. And that, you know, that, that can happen too. Um, but I think a lot of it is probably unconscious. It's true. You know, it's fine. We should talk about this. Now, the new thing I'm going to ask is I haven't even wrote on script. First thing I want to ask you is, do you ever, go to sleep at night and before you go to sleep you just voice and you're not saying you hear voices or anything <laughs> but i'm saying do you say to yourself or think to yourself all this stuff you know these funny jokes and how you would because you are an acting teaser so for an example you'd be like okay well i'm working with someone with special needs and you're coming up all this all these great ideas or come to things off of the top of your head, the top of the fly. And they're funny and they're serious. And I'm thinking, why the hell am I not thinking about this during the day? Why is it but as I'm about to fall asleep, it's just a big wave. Like, that's a great idea. I should do this more definitely. And it's kind of like, it's midnight. <laughs> it's like, why can't I have the opposite effect? So the question I want to ask you is before you go to sleep, you get flooded with all these ideas and jokes and pranks that you wanted to do during the day. That that does happen. And it's not always at night, but it is often, you know, at random times and it's not always at the time where it's the most useful. So I, I, I keep a note um, thing on my phone. That's actually for this because I'll come up with, I also write um, and I've been getting more into that recently with the pandemic and things being a lot slower. So I've been writing uh, a lot too. And so I'll get ideas for a story or a, a maybe something, a scene into something I'm already writing or something. And 
it's very rarely at the time where I'm sitting there <laughs> ready to write. <laughs> um, but so I make sure to keep keep that note section up or like a pad of paper near my bed. You know, I think that's super useful. Uh, but it makes me think of I had a theater teacher who was actually when I was in college, who was actually a theater design teacher. And I never really got into stage design or anything, but I took a class and he talked a lot about incubation um, where sleeping on it is basically a really important part of coming up with artistic or creative things like that, because you think about it all day or you work on, you, you get ideas, you see things, and it's difficult sometimes to just make that happen right in the moment. Um, but then when you kind of go to sleep, you know, it make happens a lot at this time or when you're not trying to wring your brain for it. Um, it's like an incubation period where sometimes the best ideas come out of letting go of it. So that makes sense a lot to me. No, absolutely. And do you agree or disagree that people who are, let's say, artistic kind of see the world in a different way? Not saying I, okay, for an example, I kind of live in a little fantasy land because I love Dragon Ball. Recently, I've been watching uh, Bewitch. But do you think that people who are more open to scenarios of for an example, a lot of people say, oh, do you know there's a life in space? Do you believe that, you know, hypothetically, there might be you know, different life that you've seen in a comic book in space, but kind of tweaked in a different kind of way? Or do you think artistic people just kind of have a wild sense of imagination? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think creative people, I think everybody's creative in some certain ways. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think being creative is about thinking outside the box. So I think people who have more of a creative mind or an aptitude for some, for a creative, creative um, form, in art forms or, or whatever, probably, yeah, are more likely to, to at least entertain different ideas or more, you know, be more you know, maybe on the psychology scales of like scoring higher and openness or something, um, openness to new ideas or new ways of thinking about things for sure. No, absolutely. You know, it's always good. You know, people always want to have, you know, Vince McMahon, you know, people like to joke about he surrounds himself with some mindless yes men who would kiss his ass. About, it's PG, PG-13, but would kiss his ass <laughs> on every little idea and never have the backbone or stomach or fortitude or whatever scenario you want to use to say, you know what? That idea sucks. This is a good idea. Of course, you know, you want to keep your job. So I'm like, okay, whatever you say, boss, <laughs> that's why I can't actually can't hold on to the job because I'm always thinking outside the box, but it's good to actually have people to think outside the box, you get a different point of view. You're not doing the same repetition over and over, but it's always good to get a second opinion. Definitely. Yeah. I think I, I am fully in support of the free marketplace of ideas and, you know, whether with, with everything, you know, it's, if you keep out new ideas, you're, you know, there might be new ideas that aren't good ideas, but you're not going to know that they're not good ideas unless you hear them. And you're not going to improve the ideas you have unless you hear new ones. I, so. I agree with you. Now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you about your acting and your teaching when we come back. I'm Jenny Fine. Hi, it's Mimi Chen. Hey guys, I'm Anastasia Edwards. Hi, this is Jackie Nunez. I'm Steve Spaghetti. Hi, I'm Amelia Rose. Hey guys, I'm Alexandria Denise, and you're watching Keith and Chip's show. He's doing a terrific job. Make sure you like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Keith and Jim Network. Make sure to like and hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow the Keith and Jim Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and all that fun stuff. Now, the question I want to ask you that we're talking off the air is it's never good to be labeled. But for me, people always say, you know, Keith, you always say you're the kid with a disability. 
but what else do you do? Now I'm thinking it's never good to be labeled number one or typecast because you know, there's uh, hundreds of great actors out there. Jeff Goldblum, the guy from, uh, I can't, I'm bullshitting his name, so that's why I'm not going to say it. But the guy from Next Generation who did Data, they always get picked for these certain roles as a scientist or these science films. So it's never good. So the first question I want to ask you, with an actor, have you ever walked into the room and automatically that producer said, I had the perfect role for you in the right Okay, wouldn't it be the first time I heard it? <laughs> so have I been typecast type is the question. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, that's there's a lot of difficult parts of being an actor, and that is one that so far hasn't been a problem. Um, that's been really, really nice. I mean, you know, there's there's a million issues with, with, with trying to get noticed and trying to, you know, get in the room and get into certain casting offices, booking parts. Um, but the thing that I actually have really, really been happy with so far is I've, I've been able to play a pretty large variety of different kinds of characters on, on stage and, and on camera so far. So that's actually been very, very nice. So, um, yeah, I don't know exactly why that is. Well, let me <laughs> ask- hopefully that stays that way. But no, I didn't mean to interrupt. I do apologize. Oh, no worries. Yeah. But let me ask you this. Have anyone ever said to you, because you wear glasses, you would be a great IT guy. You can be like, you know, a computer nerd or a sci-fi. That has any of those come up? Because I get those a lot. I'm like, that's why I, I kind of posted in my head. You know, I can't wait to get a professionally done haircut. So everyone's like, oh, you wear glasses. You can be a best friend. You can be, you know, a psychologist. You can do this. I'm like, Actually, I kind of want to be the hero. I want to be the badass in the film. But okay, whatever, you know, uh, scientists, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Just throw me the money. But it's kind of like people get thrown into that category of saying, mm -hmm. oh, well, there can't be a superhero that's a complete badass who wears glasses. Well, it's funny, <laughs> funny you mention that because I typically don't wear glasses. Um, but I, I, uh, recently my eyes, have, I've been on the computer a lot, so I'm wearing, I'm wearing them now. Um, but, uh, so actually I would like to play a computer nerd. I haven't been able to play one. Um, but what you're saying makes me think about, um, something else about type, right? That everybody, that that's a big conversation with actors is, you know, whether it's, I need to know my type or I'm confused about my type, or I don't like my type and I want to break outside of it. Like you're talking about. And, um, you know, it, it's I, the, the best advice I ever had was from an, another an older acting teacher that I that I had that said, you need to you need to be able to come into the room and nail your type, like fulfill their fantasy of what they think you're going to be and then also show them something else. Um, and I think that's really smart that it's there are certain things about how everybody looks and how they carry themselves, how they talk that. Um, that, like you said, the first 10 seconds, you know, you walk in somewhere, people think this is what they're going to be like. And you, if, if, if it's consistently one thing, you probably should get really good at doing that, but then also be able to add multiple layers to it. So then maybe you can be, you know, if you're always getting the tech guy, well, maybe there's, maybe there's the perfect part where there's the tech guy who's also the hero, you know, that there's this, um, you know, what else makes, what, what are your, like you said, not one out of one trick pony. How can you take and be really good at whatever people think of you as, and then also um, be more than just that. No, I agree. And not to get personal, but have you thought about weight You know, I was always thinking about it. I just came across this video like, Oh, you know, they give you these. Okay. My friend who I interviewed a while ago was a comedian. So it's funny enough. I'd be talking about it's gay. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, they dilate your eyes and they give you a ton of Vicodin so you feel like you're on cloud nine. And then they tell you to follow the laser. Follow the laser, huh? And so I guess they don't knock you out. <laughs> so it's kind of like, all right, you know, it's fine. But I really, one of the side effects may be blindness. Like, That's a big risk, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a risk I'd like to take. 
Um, but I don't know. I, I used to, my, my fiance's father um, got it done and he, he's had a great response to it. So um, maybe, maybe I, so far I can, I don't need them all the time. So it's not something I'm, I'm thinking about in the near future, but, um, but maybe, maybe if I, if I really had to wear them all the time and I wanted to get rid of them. <laughs> well, always be up for it. But you know, for me, it's like, Hey, you can knock, knock me out, do whatever to me. But I don't want to be like, okay, follow the, the laser and all of a sudden it goes to the right and you're walking to the left. Like, okay, you're blind. <laughs> you know, I, that's $4,000. <laughs> I can actually say I like to keep not throw away on a gamble, but you have to be a candidate for that too. It's not everyone can get it, you know, but you have to be, you know, if your vision's perfect or not, but you know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, I hate saying that, but it is right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know a whole lot about it, but um, I mean, it would be nice. It would be nice not to have to worry about it. No, I agree. Well, I do like the ones you have are pretty cool. Thanks. So the last question I want to ask you is how would you describe your acting? Okay, not about acting. How would you describe your teaching ability for people with disabilities? Say, uh, I want to take acting classes from you. You know, there's tons of people that are very great acting teasers, but you want somebody who's very patient. So what is your approach for people who want to take acting classes who happen to have disabilities? Yeah. Um, well, I, I've had some experience with that. And, um, you know, it obviously depends largely on on what the disability is and, and you know, to what extent and, you know, what, what how, how it affects what, what needs to be done in class. You know, I think with acting, you um, one of the, I think I th I'm, it's hard, it's hard to kind of give like a one size fits all answer, I guess, to that question. Um, I think my general answer is I just make sure with all of my students, regardless of, of that, I try to make sure to be very aware of anything that they might be needing outside of the generalized, you know, course that's like, here, here, here are the exercises that should work for you. I try to pay attention to everybody and see how the exercises or, or the classwork that we're doing is, working for them and making sure to always provide um, any, you know, making sure that everybody's aware that if there's something that isn't working for them or checking in with everybody that, that they're getting what they, you know, what they're looking for out of the class and, and making sure that everybody's improving based on their, where I, I t start with everybody where they're at and try to move them forward in the direction, not just trying to have a one size all one size fits all approach to everybody. No, I agree. And the first thing you, what I heard from most people is if you walk in with an attitude like I'm made by I'm all big and bad and you have an ego, then you might as well leave the room because you're sending yourself up for failure. When you walk into the room, you're on the same level as everyone else. You ain't special. You ain't getting people dropping whatever at your feet because like, oh, well, that person was on TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're here. You're respectful. You're going to learn. And as you said, people, it, that's the biggest thing. You have to be patient. And you never know who exactly is in that room that you're going to meet down the road. And how you interact with each other may play a part if they want to work with you down the road. Definitely. And I know for myself, I respond as a teacher. You know, that the students that I respond and have the most um, – what makes me give the most outside of the, the, the class to them are the ones who are the most committed. It's not, it doesn't really have a lot to do with, if somebody comes in and is extremely impressive, I might say, wow, that, that's, that's great. But I'm, I'm interested in the people who are dedicated and working hard, no matter what level they are or what, what they're dealing with. So, um, you know, it is, it is all about having patience for yourself as a student uh, being having patients with different students, depending on whatever is going on with them. Um, and, um, and yeah, making sure, just always trying to take each step forward. I agree. Now I do have a couple of questions for you off the air, but the last one I want to ask you is 
how can our listeners get in touch with you and what is next for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, let's see. I, um, I guess the, the, the common thing here is Instagram. Um, I put most, most social medias I'm on there at, at TS Varga, uh, Thomas Stephen Varga. Um, and, uh, my website, tsvarga.com, uh, or you, if you're following my, my, um, credits or looking at that, it's imdb.com slash tsvarga, imdb.me slash tsvarga, <laughs> uh, everywhere it's that. Um, and what was the other question? Oh, what is next for you? What is next for me? Um, well, I just, I, I don't know that I'm allowed to reveal it yet, but it's been a hard year and I'm excited that I'm going to be on a, an upcoming TV movie. Um, shooting soon so no, congrats. yeah now like i said you have a couple questions for you off the air but my last question for you i want you to be brutally honest when i first okay. approached you to be a guest on my talk show what was your first honest opinion what made you say yes and for people that follow you and you work with or people who are just hesitant in general what would you say to say you know what I didn't know this guy for a hole in the wall, but I gave him a chance and I'm happy with my decision. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. When you first messaged me, uh, it's always, it's, you know, I don't get a whole lot of unsolicited messages. So I'm, you know, I'm a little skeptical of, I don't know who this is. I don't know. Sometimes there it's a robot, <laughs> you know? Um, so I wanted to make sure and check out that, you know, who you are. And I watched some of your videos and sort of s tried to see who you were. Um, what drew me to it and what wanted, made me want to say yes is it seemed like you were really um, open, good-hearted guy. And I really liked your your um, your goal of, of being able to be an example and to kind of go after your own dreams and what you want to accomplish. That was really inspiring and I wanted to be part of it. And um, and yeah, after kind of talking to you, I, I feel like you're the same guy that I saw in those videos and easy to talk to. And um, yeah, I'd recommend it. No, absolutely. Now, wrapping up our talk show, make sure everyone follows the Key Fancy Network. Hashtag Key Fancy Network. Hit that bell icon on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's everywhere and everywhere. But our big focus right now is YouTube, getting our subscribers up. Wrapping up the uh, on our episode, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And I'm looking forward to part two down the road. So I want to say thank you for your time. 